So we're excited that the battles are here and we're going to let John come up and share with us and whatever else you guys got playing is awesome. Um, 10 years, you guys saw that. It's not incredible. So uh, let's just praise God for 10 years in this year. Thank you. I don't know what the, the statistics are for missionaries and how long they last, but I think that's probably beyond what the norm is. If it's like churches over here, <laughs> three years or less, uh, yeah, uh, missionaries, the 10 year mission is a big deal. So. All right, without further ado, John, come on up, brother. Yes. <laughs> It's just a joy to be here with you, and you guys just put it right here. I'll turn this on after we sing a song. We have a song we wanted to share with you, one of the songs that we sing almost every Sunday in Niger. Churches 
or saints would get together on Zoom and they would all sing individually, but then they'd put the songs together. And so you'd have a whole group of people singing and doing the harmonies all together. And then nations started meeting. So you'd have like the nation of England or the nation of Kenya. Different people in the nation would come together and start singing this blessing over their country. So if you get a chance, please just go on YouTube sometime and punch in the blessing. They have kids singing it, there's adults singing it, there are dancers who dance it. I mean, there's all these amazing, beautiful, powerful things that the Lord used with this blessing. And um, I'm going to sing just the first part of it, and then I'm going to sing it over you in Hausa. I just want to bless you in English and then in Hausa, because what's so exciting is what, what I started to see when I started watching this um, on YouTube in all the different countries, in all the different languages, is that God was actually bringing his people together in this time and season. And God is moving, and he's doing some sort of a refining and a sifting and a strengthening in his people that we aren't seeing in the media. So if you just watch the news, you're going to feel discouraged. But I'm telling you, as we travel around, as we're in Nigeria, we're seeing God moving. And he, in this time and season, he just wants us to seek his face. Seek his face hear his voice, and then do what he's told us to do in the secret place when we're sending to the worship you know, pray. He speaks to our hearts, hey, maybe to bless this neighbor or to do this that will bless your community. And I feel like people, the people of God are hearing his voice and rising up. I almost feel like it's undercover because you don't see it on the news. You don't hear the good story, but they're there. So I just want to sing this first verse over you guys. Lord bless you. As keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to Lord, turn him face toward you and give to be here and we want to thank you for being a part of this journey i know that especially the nagrin family you guys have been awesome every christmas we get christmas cards we have your picture on our refrigerator and um every time we open it up to get some something off our fridge we see you guys and sorry about that that's how this remains <laughs> church now has like 10 families 
Um, they have many people that are hungry for the Lord. They come into the pastor's house to do Bible studies and meet with him on the wasted land right there in the village. And another place up north has a, a spot where a young pastor from our Bible school went up there. And, and they're actually, there's a grace on them right now. They're seeing people uh, just miraculously really healed and salvation. And it just is like a special grace on that spot. They're actually, we heard that they're actually bringing people from other villages that are sick because God is touching so many people in that one village. Everyone else is hearing about and bringing them to be prayed for. So there's, the gospel is just uh, really amazingly just growing and just uh, in this season of so much fear, the Lord is doing something. And you won't hear that on the media. And I want to encourage you today that when Danny and I were praying, when the first thing happened with COVID, there's like a spirit of fear attached to it. You know what I'm saying? You say COVID, so there's, like a, there's a fearful thing that comes. So we as a family had to pray in our house in Niger. We anointed that threshold with the oil. We pleaded the blood of Jesus. We said, we will go through this season without being afraid in Jesus' name. <laughs> and uh, we want this home to be a place where we can receive people, pray with them, and that if anyone is sick, that we'll see them healed in the power of Jesus. And it really just broke something off of us so that we've been able to go through the season without really being filled with as much fear as I believe it would have been if we hadn't fixed the eyes on the Lord at that time. It's a continual process if you keep fixing your eyes on Jesus, and that's what we're talking about today a little bit. To share with you some of what the Lord has been sharing with us about keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus in the midst of all the distractions around us. Um, but anyway, in Niger, the church is alive and well. The church is growing. And I believe we're on the edge of seeing the Lord move in a great way around the world, like another great awakening, a great harvest coming into God's kingdom. And I believe we're just shaking things up and the whole this whole season positioning people, transitioning people, all this stuff around the world, we're going to see a great harvest come into his kingdom. And right. Niger, we're beginning to see that. I know in the States, we're beginning to hear some different reports about that. So I want to encourage you today. It's not about the size of a church. The Lord doesn't care about that stuff. Amen? Amen. It's about how deep we go in him, how much we are based in his word, filled with the spirit. And as we grow deeper in the Lord, he can just do whatever he wants with us. And I, I always remember the story of Billy Graham and, and how there's this one... Uh, older gentleman that spent his whole life trying to witness he and stuff and he didn't really have much fruit but at the end of his life he shared with a young boy and this young boy turns into you know the one we know Billy Graham when all of the world did all these major crusades and things like that and yet the one that brought Billy Graham to the Lord was this old man who's been years he thought fruit was ministry and yet <laughs> look what happened amen yeah. so the Lord is not interested in numbers but he's very interested in people's hunger and um, wanting to come close to him so as we draw close to the Lord Wherever we are, as we all have purpose to just draw close to the Lord, He just can do something special in our midst. He can touch a life. He can transform our life to begin with, and then He transforms someone else. And that's the church. <laughs> and I believe in this season we're going to start to see that, not even just in the church building, but as we're going about our regular lives, we're going to bring someone who's hungry, who's afraid, that we can touch, we can impact, we can talk to them, and the Lord can just really use that encounter to help bring transformation, and not only in our life, but in a brother or sister's life, and it just continues, it grows, amen? amen? And the Lord from the grassroots can change our nation, can change the world. And I believe we're going to see that. So this is where we live, the red spot right there, and uh, that's why it's not moving, I have to do this. Okay, and uh, this is the Niane is where the plane is, that's the capital city, there's only one international airport in Niger. From there, we take a land, we have a land cruiser, we drive 10 hours, so this is part right here, and that is Morali. Where we live. And this is our vision as a family and the ministry that we are part of. Basically, to serve the Nigerian church. We're there to serve them as a family with whatever they need. And it really is this discipleship and equipping the Christians in Nigeria so that they can be sent out, they can plant churches, they can win uh, the people in Nigeria to Christ. So, our vision is to serve the Nigerian Christians the church to help see them equipped, disciple, sent out, so that they can reach the nation to Jesus. And this is the Bible school. Uh, I'm the director of the school here. I work with six other volunteer pastors. They're full-time pastors, but they volunteer in the Bible school. So they have a full-time job as a pastor, but they completely volunteer their time each day in the Bible school. And they just love the Lord and we're discipling the whole generation of guys like this one. His name is Jimari. He's one of the first Christians and the people group, the Fulani people group. They're out north of Niger, they're very hard, they're resistant to the gospel, they used to be. The last couple of years, they're just opening up whole village to Jesus. I'm not, I'm not making this up, this is real. Like, this is for many years, the Fulani people, 
They're the ones that actually brought Islam from Egypt way back when, hundreds of years ago, to Niger. And they're very strong in Islam. So they had nothing to do with Christianity. But just the last few years, they've been just opening up to the gospel. There have been uh, dozens and dozens of received baptized, uh, just loved the Lord. And they've, come, they've been sent down to a Bible school, and they're being discipled. And that was a young man last year that we went through our program. So these are discipleship students, leadership students, the teachers that I work with are in the back, the, the full-time pastors, and on the side, they're giving their time to volunteer teaching the Bible school. They're just awesome men of God. The guy right here, his name is Pastor Hashim. He is the national leader, our leader in Niger. So we are under him, we serve under him. He, he tells us what he wants us to do, what's the most impact that we can make in our country of Niger. And we just love him, his family, he's part of so many things. We just love the Nigerian people. And these are just some of the classes. You probably have seen some of this if you've been reading updates. Um, some of the classes that have graduated the last couple of years. Uh, they've been sent out. These are two that graduated in December of this last year. Uh, on the right is Haruna. He's now pastoring full time with his family. He's doing a great job. On the left here is Yahuza. And he's one of the ones out north working with the Fulani. So he's uh, from the Hausa people group, but he's not in his family. But he has Fulani in his blood, and he's now working out north as a missionary to the Fulani people, and the Lord is using him and his family in a mighty way. So they went to the Bible school, we sent them out, now they're working up there, and they're doing a great job. This is our evening school program. They're all happy to finish after two years. They did a great job, they got their diplomas, and uh, this is our current year right now, our evening school students. This is the current year of the discipleship students. I actually got them to laugh, to smile. <laughs> in Asia, maybe like in the old times in the States, before there was technology, when you take a picture, it's like such a solemn moment, it only is like that. So we always have to make a joke or something and help that and then like snap the shot. So I must have done something really funny. It's <laughs> a great picture of them. So be praying for those guys. They, they are in the Bible school right now. We're going to be sitting about the end of this year. We started in January, we ended in December. We were midway through this year. We teach you in the fall and go back to Nigeria, and then sending them out in December to go. Bless the churches, the pastors, and the, also some of these pastors, people pastors, and send them out to plant churches. So after there's a church planted like this one, there's usually the church members who do a little straw hot. After a few years, the church begins to grow. For the rainy season, it's very hard to meet on the straw. So the Lord, we believe the Lord for provision, and we've had amazing provision to build buildings this last two years. I think we've built two or three churches like this that helped the village churches. So this is a church that was just built a few months ago, and we're thankful for what the Lord is doing in Niger. And it's all because of your prayers and your encouragement to our family. So we just wanted to say thank you. May God bless you. And I hope that you realize from seeing some of this stuff, as in the body of Christ, we're all linked together. You know what I'm saying? It's not like we're individual units. We're like, we're all together. And when you pray for our family, when you pray for Niger, it links you right into all that God's doing there. When we pray for you, when we visit you like today, we see you, it links us in with what God's doing right here. So it, we're all together unified in the body of Christ and God's working. On the few minutes that we have left, I just want to share with you something that God has spoken to us actually in 2019, December. This is something that gave us as a family that we've been sharing in Niger and the churches. This happened before COVID which we think is pretty cool because Lord kind of prepared us as well as helped us to get the word out of Niger, um, kind of the word of faith of what the Lord is going to be doing in the midst of the season of all this stuff going on. So the scripture is in John chapter 20, verse 19 through 22. And I'm just going to read the whole scripture right here. If you'd like, you can open up your Bible. Um, and then I do have some of the scripture, as you'll see, it's, it's on the overhead as well. But I just want to read the whole passage just to get more of an idea before we break it down a little bit. So John chapter 20, verse 19 through 22. The scripture says, Then the same day, at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we bless you this morning. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the family 
that we have here at New Hope Bible Fellowship. We thank you for them as they have been persevering, and we thank you for what you're doing here in this, uh, this county. We also thank you for what you continue to do in Niger. We know that it's not easy. There's a lot of distractions. The enemy tries to bring all this stuff, but we're in the midst of it. You've given us the hope that we have in Christ. And we, you have called us overcomers. Uh, you have overcome the world, and we, that you are for us. And there's nothing that can separate us from your love. And we thank you for that this morning. We just ask that you to come and to just speak to us, Lord. And if we're dealing with fear or anxiety, or if we have things in our life that is uh, distractions, we ask that this morning that you would help us to draw us closer to you and to be able to refix our eyes upon you, the author and finisher of our faith. And we thank you for the race that you have before each one of us for your glory that you want us to run. We thank you for that. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so this is the year 2020, right? Okay, so when I was about nine years old, I was really good at Little League. I mean, I, I love baseball, soccer, all that stuff, but I played Little League all the way through up and I grew up in Maine. So when I was in Little League, I, I was really good. I was like a pitcher, shortstop. I was, you know, I was, I loved to hit the ball. But when I was around nine to 10 years old, all of a sudden I began to miss everything. I couldn't hit anything. And, you know, from going from one of the most popular guys to like a guy that couldn't even hit the ball, that kept striking out, I was like, going on. I remember that time. It was like I was so good just naturally. And, all of a sudden I came. and one day my mom and dad were driving along the road and I said, Jonathan, can you read that sign up ahead? And I, I looked up. And I, was like, I can't read it. I got a little closer. And, can you read what it says? No. Wait, as we passed the sign, I was like, oh, it says 35 miles an hour. And they're like, oh, boy. <laughs> Maybe that's been the issue. <laughs> so they took me to the eye doctor and they found out that I had, I was nearsighted, which means I can't see far, far distances. And I got my first pair of glasses, I think I was 10 years old. And I remember after a week, I had to wait back then those days, like a week or two before the glasses came in the mail. And I remember putting them on, going outside and seeing every leaf on each tree. Like the detail was amazing. I could see the blades of grass. I was like, wow, I just stood there for like 10 minutes looking around. Like, I can't believe it. And um, that did help my batting <laughs> after that. <laughs> I could actually see the ball. <laughs> so, um, but uh, last December, as we were praying about this year, the Lord spoke to us saying, this is going to be a year, like a 2020 restoring your vision, uh, to restore the vision back on Jesus, uh, the crucified Christ. And I'm not sure about you guys, but before this year, we were so busy with all this stuff going on. We were just running around, all this. We got the programs and this and this and this, and all that is good stuff. But all of a sudden, we found ourselves around March, April, like at home in Niger, with all this stuff on our hands. And we could always, we, I'm a carpenter, I did all of my hands. And things like that. So I'd be staying busy, but all the ministry, all the stuff we've been doing, we just stopped. We couldn't do it. Bible school shut down, the churches that we go on Sundays, the ministry will shut down, and, and the Lord began to speak to me and say, this is that, what I told you in December, this is a time to refocus on me. And I just want to go through the scripture a bit and just talk about um, how we can do that. And in verse 19, it says, the same day, the same day as what? The same day that Jesus rose from the dead. The very same day, that evening, the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, because they were afraid of the Jews. Why were they afraid? Well, the Jewish leaders and uh, the Romans, they had just crucified Jesus, their Savior, their Lord. And they had seen him crucified, and they were afraid. If they did that to our master, what are they going to do to us? So they locked the door, they're afraid, they're inside. How, how many of us can relate to that when COVID came? <laughs> you know, we're, all, we're all isolated, we're kind of locked down in the home. And... Um, I love this when it says, it says, Jesus came and stood in the midst. He didn't stand on the outside. He wasn't like, you go in. He came in the midst of their fear, in the midst of them being afraid and anxious. Right in the house where they were staying, Jesus came in the midst and said to them, peace be with you. Uh, in Niger, we say, salamu alaikum. Peace be upon you when you go into the house. The correct response is, alaikum salam. And that's Arabic. And that goes way back, and in, in actually they translated the New Testament Bible, it says, Salam Aleichem, right here. And it says, peace be upon you. And I love that. Because it just goes to show that Jesus, um, in the Middle East, he was, whenever he would go he, somewhere, he would just say, Salam Aleichem, he would be like, peace be upon you. 
and uh, the disciples went, and verse 20, again, this is John 20, 20. This is the year 2020, 2020 vision, John chapter 20, verse 20. When he had said this, Jesus said, peace be upon you. He then showed them what? He showed them his? Help me out here. He showed them his? And his? And his? Side. Why? What did they see? But he had a resurrected body. He didn't have to have scars, right? Isn't that kind of cool to think about? Like, Jesus wanted that symbol of the new covenant engraved into his resurrected body so that we are sign and witness to you and to I. Uh, and the, and the, in Revelation, John has a vision. He sees the lamb looking like he'd been slain. And there's, there's definitely still that realization when we see Jesus. He still has the marks and, and the symbol of what he did when he gave himself for you and I when he died on the cross. And it's just such an awesome example. I know when Danny and I got married, uh, the, the sign of our covenant was a, a ring. You know, a lot of times it's popular in this culture. In Niger, there's not always a ring. Sometimes it's like a handshake, but you can't afford a ring. Or <laughs> With this handshake, I do. <laughs> uh, it's very different. But, um, each culture has a different way of showing commitment or covenant. But Jesus showed his covenant by engraving us, you and I, in the palms of his hand in his sight. Forever, we are there. We're in him, he's in us. That's why we call the body of Christ. Christ in us, we're in Christ, and we're all one around the whole world. You are one with the body of Christ in Niger, those beautiful people that you saw. We're one body with them in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Because of why? Because of Jesus. He died. He made us one body in him. He put us into himself. He put himself into us. We are one with Christ. So when the disciples saw Jesus, they were filled with joy. Verse 19, they're afraid. They're just thinking, what happened to our master? What happened? They killed him. They may come and kill us. We're anxious. What's going to go? And all of a sudden, their fear was turned to joy. Why? Because they saw Jesus. And that has been something that's been the challenge for my family. My wife and I, as Danny was sharing, uh, it's been the challenge this year. It's been not being, not letting yourself get distracted by the media, by all this stuff, but making sure that we give a prime time of each day to the Lord, keeping our eyes set on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And when we do that, he fills us with faith. He begins to show us what he's doing in the midst of this season around the world. Let me see here. Yep. So we need the Lord to restore our sight. 2020 vision. Just like when I was nine and I couldn't hit that ball and I, I got glasses, I got back to the 2020 vision, all of a sudden I could see clearly again. I feel like the Lord is just trying to tell us as his church, this is the year to get refocused back on him, the crucified Christ, our Lord and Savior. And as we get refocused on the Lord, he begins to line us up with his purposes and plans that he has foreordained and placed before us. So in Niger, this is a road that goes to, that I was telling you about, the 10 hours to where we live. That's the one uh, one road is actually we live in a city, you know, it looks like a village. And this is the one road that goes between the one big international airport, the huge city, and the second largest city. So only one road, and this is and this is actually a good part of the road, it's usually pretty bumpy. This is the front bumper of our land cruiser. And this is a very uh, you know, we see this on the on the average basis, probably four to six trucks like that tipped over on the side of the road. New trucks like that every time we make this trip between the two cities. And it's very easy to get distracted because in Niger, you don't have those like, bumper strips. Like when you start to go off, it tells you the tires, it's like boom. We don't have that in Niger. We have like a big pit. So when you go off the road, I mean, you're off. <laughs> you're not just only off a little bit. Like it just turns the whole truck over. So we see that. Like as we're passing these trucks, we always realize like we have to be careful to keep that straight path. Like keep going straight. Like, make sure that we're not tired. And if we get tired, we get out, we take a bush stop. We, run around and use the amazing bush facilities. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, so this is that road, and we always are reminded to not get distracted. And I think that this is something the Lord showed us last year to prepare us for this year, to realize that we really need to, as a church, remain fixed and not for our spirit, really fixed on Jesus. And not let ourselves get distracted, because this year has been one thing after the other. There's COVID, and then there's something else, and then there's something else. And demonstrations and one thing after the other. And as a church, we don't need to be uh, worried about what's happening on the outside because we know the Lord is at work. He's doing amazing things, but we have to make sure that we continue to keep our eyes 
fixed on him. So another example that I love is Peter. You know, we all love Peter in scripture. And I love that time when he was, uh, they saw Jesus and all the disciples were like, oh, it's a, yes. a ghost. And then Jesus said to the disciples, he said, help me. Fear not, it is I. And then we see, uh, he said, Peter said, of course, an amazing thing that Peter would say. If it is really you, Lord, bid me come walk on the water. And Jesus is like, hey, come, come on. Well, I grew up in Maine. I was I lost when I was 15, and I was in the ocean. And, uh, these are pictures from the Sea of Galilee. And we know it was a storm when they were out there. It wasn't that you see these old pictures of like, you know, Peter walking on the water towards Jesus, like nice and flat, right? But I believe there's some waves uh, on that. Uh, the Sea of Galilee, and I think there's some waves that go up and down. So Peter gets out, he sees Jesus. He's like walking towards him, like, I'm, I'm, I'm cool, I'm good. There's Jesus. He walks, walking towards the Lord. And all of a sudden, uh, it says, the scripture says, he saw the wind. Now, how many people have seen the wind? I've never seen the wind. I don't think it's possible. But we see the effects of the wind. And when you're out in the ocean, like I did growing up, um, whenever there's wind, there's white caps. Never, there's a lot of wind, there's waves. It just goes with the wind. So I believe the scripture is saying, Peter began to notice the distractions. He began to notice the waves, the effect of the wind. So he sees Jesus, and then he sees the wave. And then he's like, oh no, and the wave goes down. Oh good, I see Jesus, he keeps going forward, and then all of a sudden, a wave. And um, I feel like this is the year like that. The Lord is saying, I'm right here. And we, we are, we're like, oh, I'm good. I see the Lord, everything's going well. And then like a wave, and we're like, ah, oh, COVID! <laughs> ah! Demonstrations! Racial things, all the stuff. Ah! And we know the Lord is in control. He knows what's going on. And there's a lot of stuff that's from the enemy trying to distract people. But as a church, we have to make sure the eyes are fixed on Christ. And when they are, he can use the situations around us to draw other people to him. So what happens, Peter's all afraid, he's afraid, he begins to sing. He says, Lord, save me! And immediately, Jesus is there, his hand is right there, he grabs a hold of Peter and pulls him out. And I feel like the Lord's done that to my family this year. We were a little bit afraid at one point. The Lord just kind of drew us right out. He said, where's your thing? <laughs> I knew it was going to be happening. Just draw us right out, and we begin to walk with him back to the boat, and he begins to speak his purposes and plans into us. So I want to encourage you today, if you felt like you're sinking a little bit, if you feel like you've been a little bit afraid, a little bit anxious in this season, I want to encourage you, Jesus is right there. He's closer to you than that wave. He's closer to you than that uh, distraction. You just need to trust him, put your eyes on him. A couple other quick things right here. Number two, we need to realize that we've been set apart. Jesus said to the disciples, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. This word for sin needs to be set apart. And I have been realizing this season more than ever that we've all been set apart for Jesus and him and himself. We're not set apart for programs. We're not set apart to do good works, which all that is good, and we do as Christians. But ultimately, the Lord has set us apart for himself. And it's a wonderful thing to walk with the Lord, to know him, to, walk, to grow in him. And uh, in, in the scripture, it says that he's called us ambassadors of Christ. Now, this is the embassy in Niger. How many people have seen the embassy before? Okay. You have my here. Good. So an embassy is a place where an ambassador lives. And it's in a foreign country. So this is the American embassy that's located over in Niger, where we live. And it's a brand new building. I love how they made it. And uh, the embassy Inside of here, you'll find an ambassador, and the ambassador and his staff, they represent America to Niger. So if you go into the embassy of the United States of America, this one right here, you'll, the culture and the language will be American, English, you'll probably have AC on, it'll be comfortable, it'll look very much like America over in Niger because the embassy is uh, bringing America to Niger, so to speak. Well, in the, in right here in Washington, D.C., in the States, they have a Niger embassy. And the culture there is French, it's uh, Hausa, and uh, they have the whole culture of Niger because they brought Niger over to the United States. So sometimes when I miss talking in the Hausa language, I'll call the embassy up if we have to paperwork and stuff or have some questions, and I'll start talking 
to people in the Niger embassy in their heart language, and they love that. They're like, oh, you're an American, you know our language, and we'll just be chatting in Hausa. But they have brought Niger to America. So what I'm trying to say is, when we're set apart, we know that we're set apart from the Lord, we're his ambassadors. Our job on planet Earth is to represent his kingdom culture to those around us. And it's not just Sunday morning, it's a whole life, our behavior, the words we speak, the way that we live, everything that we do, we're representing God's kingdom on earth. And uh, I believe in this season, we're gonna see the church across the whole globe begin to rise up and to represent God's kingdom in heaven on earth. Because he's called us his ambassadors. He's called us to model kingdom culture, his love to those around us. And at the end of this, Jesus said, he breathes on them and says to them, receive the Holy Spirit. The disciples were filled with a fresh and filling, and they went out in the spirit and the power of God to be a witness. And this morning, I just want to take a minute and just pray. And ask the Lord to fill us again with a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit, and that he'd help us to refocus, number one, our vision on Jesus. Number two, that we realize that we've been set apart to be an ambassador, that we're to represent heaven on this earth and the kingdom culture with what we do with what we say, where we're to represent his kingdom into the community where we are. And then the third thing to realize that we need the help of the Holy Spirit to be with us, to empower us, to help us to be that witness that he's called us to be. So let's just pray for a moment. Let's bow our heads and ask the Lord to help us to have 2020 vision, to realize that we've been set apart for the Lord, for him and himself, it's his purposes, that he wants to send us back with his kingdom culture, to our community, to our neighbors, to those around us with his presence, to show them God's kingdom on earth. So Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you for what you're doing in Niger. We thank you for what you're doing right here at New Hope Bible Fellowship. We thank you for our brothers and sisters here. I ask that this morning, Lord, that you'd increase our faith, that um, we all of us have dealt with fear or anxiety to some level this year, but you've called us, just like Peter, to trust in you, to not look at the wind or the wave in front of us, but to trust that you are closer than that wave. You are closer than the fear and the anxious thought that we have, that you are right there ready to grab us and pull us up. And not only do you want to pull us up, but you want to engage us in your mission. You want us to know that we've been set apart, that we're your ambassadors on earth, that you want us to go out to our neighbors, to those around us who are afraid, and to pray with them, to bless them, to encourage them. So I just ask that today, Lord, as we go from this place, that you would help us to go forth with a blessing to those around us, that we would encourage our brothers and sisters, that we would bless them, encourage them, that we would take the kingdom culture that you've given to us through the Holy Spirit and bless those around us with that. So Lord Jesus, we surrender the fear, we surrender any anxiety that we have to you. We ask you to fill us this morning with a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit, your presence, and that you help us to go from here filled with faith to make an impact for your kingdom and the culture and the world around us. And we thank you for that. We just bless you. We love you. We thank you that you bear the marks of the new covenant in your resurrected body. That say that we belong to you. Everything you have is ours. Everything we have is yours. That we are one in Christ. We thank you that you were crucified because of our transgressions. And that you've given us a new life, a new way to live. We thank you that in the midst of all that, you crucified the ability to have to live in fear. You crucified the power of sin and death, and that you have given us a new life, a resurrection life filled with hope for all eternity, just like we heard this morning. Not just for a few minutes, but for all eternity. I ask that this morning you give us a new hope. This is the name of the church, Lord, and we ask for that this morning. A new hope, a rather fresh this from your spirit, Lord, that we go from this place filled with a fresh breath of heaven that you are with us, that you are for us, and that you have put us in this season for such a time as this. You knew that we'd be born during this season. You knew that we'd be alive right now during this whole COVID stuff. And you have us here for a reason, that we can be a light in the darkness to those around us who don't know you. So please Lord, help us to be ready to go out to share this love, this hope with those around us. We thank you for that. We bless you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 May God bless you. Please forgive me. I think I went over a little.